praise. For I have called to you, be my help. Do not abandon me, O God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, Graciously hear our pleas, and since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn, and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree. 
Like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. The Lord is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock, in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day. And through it all, the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds of the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to be a fly on the wall, those private meetings that Jesus had with the apostles and disciples, explaining to him, explaining to us, uh, as he explained to them, the parables. Thankfully, the apostles and disciples did hand on for us uh, the scriptures and the interpretive keys in which to read the gospels and letters and Old Testament writings as well. As you think about uh, the images that are given to us, we have the image of seed that is planted and, and then just grows on its own accord. And we have the image of the mustard seed that also is sown and then springs up and becomes the largest of plants. Now, these everyday images are meant to stand for other things. And in the case of um, the mustard seed, it's long been interpreted as being a symbol of the mystery of the church, 
That is, it started out as uh, a band of 12 apostles and other disciples. And then from Pentecost Sunday, slowly spread and grew and began to spread out various branches to various places until such time that almost every place under the heavens, every nation, every country, has to some extent um, aspects of this one tree, the kingdom of God, the mystery of the church. Certainly, there are certain parts where that mustard seed that has become that largest of plants perhaps seems more full, and other parts where perhaps the branch seems more sparse. Um, there is always the pruning uh, that the Heavenly Father does uh, through Jesus Christ um, throughout the ages. The other thing that uh, I want to focus on this day is, is uh, gratitude, because gratitude is an essential aspect of our, of our lives. Gratitude is one of the reasons why we come to worship, to give thanks to God. And in the opening colic prayer of the Mass, there was this line, since mortal frailty can do nothing, certainly an acknowledgement of our humility that if we are to truly flourish in life, we require God's grace at work in our life. And that fits very well with the Gospel today. After all, that is how the seed scattered and sown is able to grow. That is how the mustard seed becomes the largest of plants, but for the grace of God go I. Indeed, a powerful phrase. And for that grace, we must give thanks. G.K. Chesterton said, the aim of life is appreciation. And the Bible has another beautiful verse in the Psalms. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Gratitude, thanksgiving, is the basis not only for the spiritual life, but also for human life. Writing in Psych Psychology Today, the psychiatrist Dr. Neil Burton said, quote, Recent studies have linked gratitude with increased satisfaction, motivation, and energy, better sleep and health, and reduced stress and sadness. Grateful people engage much more with their environment, leading to greater personal growth and self-acceptance, and stronger feelings of purpose, meaning, and connectedness." Unquote. Hearing those words uh, from Psychology Today and Dr. Neil Burton, uh, to mind reminds us how much we ought to be grateful to God uh, for all the grace that he has given to us. As we heard the first reading today from the prophet Ezekiel, he describes God taking a tender shoot and planting it on a high mountain and becoming a majestic cedar that gives protection for God's creatures. And we see this also in the gospel, how what God plants grows. One of the greatest writers about gratitude is that same um, person I mentioned already, G.K. Chesterton. He tells about how, as a child, he had no explicit faith in God, but he began to feel thankful for things that most people take for granted, like having hands and feet and eyes. And he was amazed that he had them, not just for one day, but for the next day as well. This wonder led him to a simple yet profound faith in God. Eventually, G.K. Chesterton would become a Catholic and join the church. Chesterton lived in a time when people were consumed by envy, resentment, and anger, where the divisions of society were usually along the lines of class more than perhaps what we see today. Chesterton's disarming simplicity, his evident joy, touched his contemporaries. Chesterton helped them see they didn't have to destroy the other guy in order to get ahead. If you want to learn more about G.K. Chesterton, um, there are some really great books that he wrote. One is called The Everlasting Man, another is called Orthodoxy. Don't let the titles uh, scare you off. 
With a little effort, they are delightful books, and they show how wonder and gratitude lead to faith. And as we know, faith is essential. St. Paul says, we walk by faith, not by sight. That's certainly been the case in my 18 years as a priest. It's like the guy Jesus describes scattering seed on the land. It sprouts and grows. He knows not how. In fact, someday, sometimes somebody will send me a note about something I don't remember saying a long time ago and how it impacted them. But that's the grace of God and the Holy Spirit doing his work. And so when I ever receive a note like that, it's a moment for gratitude to God. Friends, at the end of the day, we must simply trust that God will provide for our needs, give us his grace, and then give thanks. As the psalm says, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness and your faithfulness throughout the night. When people ask me what they can do to grow in faith, some of the things I recommend in their prayer include taking some time, at least in the morning, to offer the day to God, using perhaps the morning offering, which specifically makes mention of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and at the end of the day, at night, to look over the day, to ask pardon for sins, to look over the ways in which uh, actions taken that day were pleasing to God, but most importantly, to thank God for his presence. So friends, armed with all these things, let us uh, renew gratitude in our hearts, uh, not only for the psychological benefits that we will receive, but most especially because it is right and just so to do. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, now by God's holy word, let us turn to him in faithful prayer. For the growing church on earth, that it may welcome and redeem the cultures and values of all people, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For leaders whose plans influence the economy, that they may encourage and support farmers and all those who help bring food to our table, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who develop the land, that as they make this earth more productive, so may they reverence the natural environment created by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community, that we may grow in grace as we welcome people to the life of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially Brady Swenson, Bunny Dargis, 
Cody Binstock, Marlene Tushin, Lorraine Schreiber, Carol Borman, Andrea Diotis, Mary Jo Faustian, Delia Roca, Janice Luftus, Lorraine Nelson, Eleanor Dietrich, Tom Ambrose, Medard Kaiserschott, Janine Rademacher, Bob Devaney, Ray Swadner, Maya Mash. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Mike Magner, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your Church. For you yourself are the source of all devotion, and grant we pray that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just as more and more people are coming back to, uh, to church, uh, a reminder that we still have um, for our, the offertory collection uh, four places in the church for you to drop off your offertory uh, uh, gift. Uh, there are two uh, baskets here in the front, and then there are two uh, on, the, on the side aisles um, at the cross aisle, the middle of the church. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. I keep the Lord always before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
is one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I see, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your Church, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for a moment. My name is Morgan Timmerman, um, and I direct the elementary faith formation program here at Sacred Heart. So I want to tell you about a youth program that we are hosting this summer. The program is to called Totus Tuus, and Totus Tuus is Latin for totally yours. So this phrase represents a desire to give ourselves entirely to Jesus but through his mother, Mary. The idea is that who loves Jesus more than his own mother and who is closer to Jesus more than his own mother. So we entrust ourselves to Mary and then she brings us to Jesus. So this program, Totus Tuus, is run by the archdiocese. They send teams of missionaries to various parishes throughout the summer for a week at a time. So we have two men and two women coming to lead the program here at Sacred Heart for the week of June 27th through July 2nd. Totus Tuus is focused on catechesis, Eucharistic worship, and Christian witness, both of the missionaries who are actually living out their faith and leading the program, but also the lives of the saints. One of the key parts of the program is a daily totus to a show where one of the missionaries dresses up like one of the saints and tells their story to the kids. During the day, the program is for students going into first through sixth grade. And during the evening, the program is those going into seventh through twelfth grade. Both sessions have a balance of teaching and prayer and fun. The highlight of the week for the elementary students is the last day um, where they have water games and then they have a human ice cream sundae where one of the missionaries um, is the ice cream and the students bring sprinkles and chocolate syrup and whipped cream and they pour it on top of the missionary to make an ice cream sundae. Um, and then the last evening for the older students is also an evening of fun with a bonfire and other games as well. I'm excited to bring this program to Sacred Heart. Um, I believe that it's going to be such a blessing for our parish community. I love that Totus Tuus involves the entire parish, united in this one mission for the week. This program is for the kids, but I believe that it will benefit all ages. With that said, we do need some help. Um, the missionaries need volunteers to host them for lodging for the week. Um, they depend on us to find a place for them to stay. So we need someone to host them for lodging. We also need people to host meals for the missionaries. We need help with the program, with supervision, serving snacks and cleanup. On Wednesday, June 30th, there will be an all-parish supper, so we invite everyone to attend the parish supper. We will also need help with setup and cleanup for that supper. And then we need people to commit to prayer for this program, um, both to pray for the openness of these students' hearts to really receive Jesus and encounter Jesus in a special way, um, and also for the graces that the missionaries need to serve. Um, and also, if you do have a desire to give financially, we will accept donations to help offset the cost for the parish. So I will be in the Commons area after Mass, um, I will have prayer cards, um, registration information, and a volunteer sheet. So please stop by to speak with me. I would love to share more with you and answer any of your questions. So thank you.
Please rise. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.